Hey there, my friend. Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for coming across and sharing your earbuds with me for the next 30 to 40 minutes. I'm really going to respect your time and get straight into this. My name is Jay Stewart, the Better Body Coach, and really the goal of this video is to help you get moving in a transformation. Um, I am just completely sick of the health and fitness industry and the garbage that's being slung around trying to keep people trapped in needing to pay them for assistance. This has reached a point where it's just become so complicated and if me as a health professional is confused about the information out there, I can't imagine what it feels like to be a consumer. So really the goal here is to give you some clarity, to show you some client transformations and really the system that I've used to help over 150 men so far go from feeling horrible into feeling better. So without further ado, let's get stuck into today's presentation. I'm going to get over and really the core of this presentation is for you to learn how you can use my exact four piece formula to get off a minimum of eight to 10 kilos of fat within a three month period. Now you might be asking, well, how the hell is that going to be possible? Um, and why is Jason doing this? Well, um, I'm going to tell you straight away that this is not about giving up all of your favorite things uh, and surviving the next 10 years on chicken and broccoli. And it's not about doing endless cardio sessions. This is about giving you a reliable system that simply works. Now, I'm going to tell you from the outset, you're going to need to focus here, guys. Um, you know, there's no point, really, you're wasting your time for the next 30 to 40 minutes if you don't focus in on what I'm trying to tell you. So keep your focus here. I'm going to tell you straight away, this is not a sales pitch. In fact, there's nothing at all to buy. There's nothing to buy. The only thing that you can do is click down below this video, if you do want to jump on the phone because you decide you can't do it alone, you need help, you want some guidance so you can book an intro call at any point in time. That intro call I can tell you a bit more about later. But there's no pitch, there's no sales pitch here. There's nothing to buy. This is also not going to involve some kind of change nothing and get results approach, some you know cookie cutter approach that just does not work. And I'm not this fake guru that's going to tell you all these you know complicated bro science techniques. That's not what this is about. In fact, I'm going to show you some of my clients and how they have gone from A to B, from their current situation to their ideal situation through simplicity and just greater personal awareness. What this is, is this is a call to action. So whether you're working with me or whether you're deciding to do this by yourself, this is a call to action, man. This is your opportunity to really get the ticker moving, to get the needle moving. Let's go. What are you waiting for? So I'm going to show you a system that works. And here is just a snapshot of some of my clients that I can show you a little bit more detail about. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that there's all this confusion in the industry. Now, if you're, if you're reading you know, a ton of blogs and watching a ton of webinars, you're gonna find that there's conflicting information out there. But I do wanna make a really, really simple point. The science of fat loss is simple. It has not changed. The science of fat loss is simple. However, fat loss is definitely more difficult. And there's a simple reason for that. Changing your body and your habits is mentally and emotionally challenging. It's not as simple as just applying the science, the science of calorie management. We're going to go into a bit more of that in just a moment. So what I really tell my clients is that 90% of the journey is emotional and mental. And I find that a lot of my clients actually know They've got a great ton of knowledge. They know what to do to bring about change, but they can't get themselves to hold themselves accountable. And so you've got to ask the reason why. It's because emotionally and mentally doing the transformation is quite challenging. So I really sort of account it like this, 90% emotional, 10% physical. So a little bit about you. I'm guessing that you used to be quite healthy and quite energetic, right? And then all of a sudden, Felt like a couple of years later, you just woke up and you're a different man. You look down at your belly and you're like, oh, man, how did I get here? 
you've become frustrated, and you're a time poor, hard working guy that feels like your energy's been zapped. You want to get in shape, you want your energy and confidence back, right? But it feels like you're climbing Mount Everest. Well, I just want to show you one thing early in terms of climbing Mount Everest. Here's one of my clients, James, who's knocked 64 kilos of fat off his gut. Check out this transformation. It is absolutely phenomenal to go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side where he's confident, full of self-esteem. This is really what we're aiming for. Or maybe we're talking about Steve, um, a young guy in his early 30s who's managed to really get rid of almost all of the belly fat and really build muscle in the process, feeling strong, energetic, comfortable in his relationships, and more assertive and confident at work. So what qualifies me to be able to take 30 or 40 minutes of your time? Look, I've got all the certificates. In fact, I'm a personal trainer, I'm a university qualified dietitian, and been featured in a number of papers. But what more? what's more important, really, is the results I've got on the board working with clients like you. For example here, helping Scotty to drop 17 kilos such that his suit doesn't fit anymore. Or one of my clients that I'm working with now, Adam, that's waking up, jumping on the scales and losing weight. Real life experience is what counts. So what I want to do, guys, is just really start from basics. What is fat? Because for the majority of us that are wanting a transformation, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to lose fat. So to try and explain why the science is simple, let's start with what it actually is. Fat is just a stored form of energy, okay? So when the energy that you provide your body is on an average amount greater than the energy that you burn up, you store that as fat. Now that stems back from our caveman days when we underwent these periods of famine. and We didn't know when our next meal was going to be. So from an evolutionary perspective, that was a really good thing to happen. But in these days of, you know, Uber Eats and fridges full of choice, it's really working against us. And in fact, we have, as blokes, as men, an unlimited capacity to store fat. So not only is fat bad for our health, but it's also quite restrictive for our confidence because the more we store, the worse it gets. So what's actually happening? What's the biggest deal? Well, if you have a look here on the screen, what you'll see is an image of both uh, surface level fat and organ fat that accumulates when one becomes overweight. So what's the problem with that? Well, on the left-hand side, you've got a healthy heart here. On the right-hand side, you've got an unhealthy heart that's been clogged by the accumulation of fat around the organ. So what fat effectively does and why it's such a big issue is that it strangles the organs, increasing your blood pressure and putting it, you at greater risk of diseases you know, like diabetes, heart attack, high cholesterol, the list goes on. That's why we want to change it. But let me ask you a question right now. What current pain is your health or your weight causing you. And I bet the thing that you think about is nothing to do with, you know, heart attack. It's more to do with what practically does. So does it restrict the amount of activity you can do with the kids? Does it make you feel like you're lacking confidence? Does it come against you when you get to the beach and you're worried about taking your shirt off? Just spend a moment thinking about how your life would change if you could potentially get rid of some of that body fat and start your transformation now. So a good question is, if we know this, why don't we act? Why have we got our head in the sand? My belief is that it's partially due to the fear of failing. failing. Like I said, my guys tend to come to me at a point where they've tried a number of different things along the route and they are at breaking point. And the concept of trying to do another transformation, trying to go on another diet. They just can't do it anymore. They're so scared and really it's easier for us to put our head in the sand and to ignore it rather than actually do something about it. We call this being stuck inside the comfort zone. When we're in our comfort zone, there's really no risk, okay? The moment we decide that we wanna do a transformation, all of a sudden, our 
anxiety goes up because we're putting ourselves out there. We realize just what potentially could come along if we were to be successful. And then we think about what it could mean to us if we fail again. And so what do we do? We drag around this fear constantly for the rest of our lives. It's really, I feel it's sad because I know that if I was able to give you some basics here to get you started, that fear would start to be replaced by perhaps hope and excitement and possibility. It's not your fault. You're not the failure, my man. I want you to remember that. You are not the failure. Your beliefs are what are failing you. Not you as a person, your beliefs. And here, you've taken the first step. There's a lot of myths that really come into the whole idea of doing a transformation or losing fat. These myths include things like I've listed here. It's really expensive. Or I have to starve myself. I hate doing cardio. I don't have the time. I work 80 hours a week. I don't have any time. Or I'm unmotivated. And because I'm unmotivated, I'm a failure and I'll never be able to achieve something I set my mind to. We're going to bust a few of these myths in today's presentation. So where I want you to think of yourself right now, here in your current situation, you want to get to this ideal situation where your confidence improves, you're feeling better, you're looking better, and that distance in between that we need to jump across is called the gap. How do we cross the gap? This was a gap that was crossed by Shane. On the left-hand side, you've got a big, really a guy that self-confessed, gorged, and felt like crap when he woke up in the morning. Check out the change that's happened a year later. He's almost turned what was a big fat gut into a V-taper of all things. Look at the difference in his face. How would this change if you were able to achieve a transformation like this? Or Luke here, one of my other clients, who's lost about 12 kilos in the period of six months, okay? Check out the side view. What would that do for you to not have carrying around that weight both psychologically and physically? I know what it feels like, man, to have to change your beliefs and the fear that that conjures up. And I know this because I was shackled to a certain fear for all of my, say, 30 years of, I guess, conscious life. And that was this fear of skydiving. And I was so shackled by this fear. What I knew is that on the other side of this fear lied freedom. And so after practicing and practicing and working on my mind and one day being able to conquer this fear about two years ago, I now know what the opportunity is for you if you can too conquer this fear. It was terrifying for me. So let's go into a bit of coaching, a little bit of training on what approach you should take. I call this the four pillars of transformation. Now I'm going to spend a bit of time on this slide. Now I'm here to tell you that when it comes to fat loss or getting rid of the dad bod, the only way that you get there is through getting into a calorie deficit. We're going to talk a bit more about this in a second. A calorie deficit simply means the calories that you take in are less than the calories that you burn up. Okay. Now, these are what lead to changes in a short to medium term basis. But why is it that so many people go on a transformation, lose maybe three, four, five, ten 10 kilos, and then put it all back on six to 12 months later? Have you ever considered that? Why is that the case? Well, I've come up with this model called the four pillars. Nutrition activity, they form the primary pillars of transformation because that is what modulates Calories, you can burn more up or you can take less in. However, there's a level below that which I call the secondary pillars. Getting on top of these secondary pillars is really the key to whether or not you're successful in the long term. Those secondary pillars include mentality, improving your mindset, and lifestyle. 
looking at whether the changes that you've made are going to fit with your lifestyle. So I just want to tell you straight away from the start, you can do it, man. You can do it without me and you can do it if you just decide to put your mind to something. If you develop the focus and the commitment that's required to get yourself started, getting started is the toughest thing. You can do it, but I do suggest you get some support along the way. There's two ways that I can help you out personally is if you want to get on board, maybe we can book a call and I can talk to you a bit more about our coaching program. But alternatively, you can just jump on our free Facebook group. Just jump onto Facebook, uh, search Men Mastering Weight Loss and Health, and you'll get a support group there of some 500 plus guys who are all on the same journey as you. Just get some support if you're going to do it alone. So let's go back to this idea of a calorie deficit. We can get in a calorie deficit in a number of ways. A good way to do it is to increase the amount of calories that we burn on a daily basis. And we can do that through exercise activity. And we can also do it through just being more active in our general lives. This is a good way to do it. But in fact, an even better way to do it is to reduce the calories that you take in. And I'm gonna show you a slide in the moment which is gonna prove this to be the case. But of course, you don't have to do things in isolation. The best way to get into a calorie deficit and start burning up some of those fuel supplies is really to do both. To increase the calories that you burn and reduce the calories that you consume on a daily or weekly basis. I want to point out that I teach all of my clients that nutrition is actually 90% of the result. And I'm going to give you a few examples why. On the left hand side of the table here, what we've got is some calorie contents of some average foods that men might consume. So things like a McDonald's Big Mac, a 600 ml Coke. A McDonald's Big Mac contains about 560 calories. That means nothing to us unless we've studied nutrition or we understand a bit about calorie management. But let me just put it to you this way. Flip over to the other side of the table. How many, uh, how many minutes of certain activities are required to burn off those McDonald's Big Mac calories? Well, let's go down to say swimming laps. We'd need to do about 70 or 80 minutes swimming laps to burn off 563 calories. Or if we go down to the next one, we're going to need to do around an hour of vigorous rowing to burn off the 560 calories from our Big Mac. Or to look at walking as a last point, we're gonna to need to walk for about 90 to 100 minutes to burn off one Big Mac. So let me put it to you. What is going to be easier? Choosing a better meal that's not a Big Mac or going and doing a whole lot of exercise to try to offset your calories? This is why doing both is a good idea, but definitely starting with nutrition is paramount. Now, I just wanna make a really important point here because I said to you at the outset that this is not about going on a diet. This is about consuming less calories, not less food. In fact, if I was to show you a picture of my food, you'd be like, wow, this guy eats well. It's because I'm consuming nutrient-dense foods, not calorie-dense foods. As said by Ronald McDonald here, you simply cannot outrun a bad diet. So if you're going it alone on a transformation, I really do su suggest you look at your diet first. And the most important change you need to bring in is to be eating whole foods that are not processed. This really is going to take care of such a large proportion of your results. So focus on nutrition first, despite what everyone else says. Now, your response might be, okay, cool. I'll take your advice, Jace, and go with that. I'll just eat less. And this can become a slippery slope, as evidenced here by Adam Sandler. So what's the problem with just simply cutting out your calories and not worrying about the exercise side? Well, follow me here on the equation on the left-hand side. No calories burned because you're inactive. 
and you are reducing your calorie intake because you're dieting. What's the result of that? Well, the body fights back and it says, no, 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 no. What I'm going to do is adapt by reducing all of the calories that you spend so that even though you're eating less, I'm burning up less as well. Okay, so it means that you end up accumulating fat still despite the fact that you're eating less and it becomes a slippery slope. If you continue to go down this idea of I'm just going to starve and eat less and eat less, eventually the body is going to adapt and fat loss is going to become impossible and this is why it's really important to do both. We want to be aiming for fat loss, not weight loss. And that's why with my clients, I'm always very clear in the fact that looking at your waist circumference at the belly is a far more important measure than jumping on a set of scales. Because what the scales won't tell us is whether you've lost fat or you're losing muscle and water. However, if we're managing or measuring our waist circumference, we know that that's fat actually coming off the gut which is where fat builds up in a man, which is why we are at greater risk of a heart attack as it squeezes our organs. So this is really important. Now, before you think, oh, Jace, I don't want to do cardio. You said no cardio. Well, I do think cardio has some really important benefits towards heart health. It has some benefits towards burning some extra calories but I would never suggest that it's a good idea for you to be spending hours on a cardio machine. So before you think this, I want you to think this. Why? Well, this is exactly what Brad did. We call this style of transformation recomposition. It's a big word that basically means trying to get rid or lower your body fat levels and effectively create muscle at the same time. Now, previous to now, science sort of suggested that maybe this was impossible. It's certainly difficult, but it's definitely possible, and paper after paper has proven this to be the case. I mean, look at the photos here of Brad. This is achieved by a combination of dietary strategies and lifting weights. Why? Well, for every year that you get older, you start to lose a small proportion of your muscle mass. Who cares? What's the, what's the point of that? What's the big deal about that? Well, your muscle mass really is the thing that keeps your metabolism firing. So as you go from 20 to 30 to 40 to 50, your muscle mass, unless you do something about this, is slowly dropping. So it means you're almost going from having a Mustang engine to a Yaris engine. Now let me ask you a question. Which one is going to burn more fuel? Even if we just left it in the driveway, in neutral, idling. Which one's going to burn more energy? Of course, it's going to be the bigger engine. And this is the reason why. The only way to arrest the dad bod progression is through a combination of eating less calories, not going on a diet, and building a bigger engine for life. Now this can be done through home workouts, or it can be done in a gym, but we need to be putting our muscles under some form of resistance if we want them to grow at all and give us a chance to develop this engine. So really, let's sort of take a break at that point and lock in the knowledge that you've just learned. Nutrition is key, and it's all about calorie management. We're about reducing the level of calories that we consume, not reducing the amount of food you consume. One is about going on a diet, the other one is being smarter about your choices. And on the exercise size side, what's really, really important is not doing these long slaving cardio sessions. It's about trying to preserve the muscle mass that you already have. And there are certain programs that we can put you on which are going to help you to achieve both of those things, both the diet benefits 
and the muscle benefits. Now, where do we go wrong in a transformation? Well, firstly, the vast majority of us never get started. We talked about fear and procrastination at the start, didn't we? And it's really the problem that if we just get stuck in this procrastination loop forever, we never actually move forward in our lives and get closer to going from our current situation to our ideal situation where we know we're going to feel happier, more confident, etc. But the other part that we go wrong is that we get started without any level of change to our psychology and what ends up happening is we give up. We give up. Now, why does that happen? Remember we said that fat loss science is simple. It's just simply calorie management. If it was that simple, why are so many of us failing to actually get the bodies that we want? Well, it's because of the secondary pillars that we talked about at the start. The primary pillars of calorie management help to change your body. The secondary pillars of calorie management, which include mentality and mindset, and your lifestyle, they are what help to make your change, your transformation permanent. Now, without these changes, without addressing mindset and lifestyle, everything is going to be temporary. Do you see what I'm saying? So let me explain this in a bit more detail. I want to posit to you an analogy. I want you to think about the job of an autopilot. So a plane is taking off course from, say, Los Angeles to London. And along the way, that plane gets bumped out of the way constantly by turbulence and wind. In fact, 95% of the time, that plane is off course. But yet, why is it that that plane always ends up in the destination that it's intended to do? In fact, the pilot, the actual human pilot, could come back and sit in the lounge area with the passengers and that plane would still arrive. And this is to do with the autopilot of the plane. The autopilot's job is to correct the course of the plane, right? To make sure it always ends up from its destination to landing in London or wherever its destination is. Do you know that we men have an autopilot as well? So what happens here is that we decide to go on a health kick and we don't know anything about these secondary pillars of mindset and lifestyle. We think it's all about calorie management. And of course, this is what your personal trainer tells you. So you start your transformation. You start to lose weight. You start to lose fat because you're doing things which a healthy person does. So you get results. But then once the novelty wears off, your autopilot kicks in. In fact, those old habits come back and become a voice on your shoulder that acts as your autopilot and says things like, come on, man, why are you bothering? You're four weeks in, you've lost enough weight. Why don't you just go back to what you were doing? Or you're tired. Come on, man. It won't hurt to have six beers tonight, despite the fact that it's a Tuesday night. And all those old habits come back. What's happening here is you are on course to a new destination, your ideal body. But your autopilot kicks in, corrects your course, and ensures you always end up back at the original destination you were headed. Destination fat man. And this is why it's critical for you to be able to change your autopilot. The only way to do that is to first become aware of it and secondly, to try and install a new program that really gets your habits going in the direction that you need. So then you might ask the question, well, where do my habits come from? They are indeed a program. They're a program that is built tightly into your subconscious mind. Think of this bundle in your subconscious mind that's been installed over the last 20 to 30 years, you got some of it from the genetics of your parents, but the majority of it has come from your environment and it's accumulated and accumulated from things you surround yourself with, people, your workplace, and this has formed who you are. 
So if you look at your life, what you will see is literally a printout of your habits. So the only way to go about changing your body is to go through your habits. How do you change your habits? We need to change the program. This is the only way. It's kind of like if you were watching Netflix, if you didn't like the program, what would you do? You'd change the program. You wouldn't yell at the TV screen and say, get away, I'm sick of you. You'd change the program. Changing the program changes the habits. Changing the habits changes the outcome. This is the part that your PT doesn't tell you. I want to tell you a story about this guy, Josh, one of my clients, who went from being terribly, terribly unhealthy with terrible habits. In fact, let's read the caption here. 12 months ago, I couldn't tell you what this machine was, let alone what it was called, but it's now a new chapter of our life. It wasn't about giving him a gym program and saying, all right, go, son. It was about working with him one-on-one -on -one to change his program, change the program, change the habits, change the habits, change the result. That's what's key. Or Adam, another one of my clients on the left-hand side, you can see a guy here who looks completely unmotivated, who feels unhealthy. On the right-hand side, you've got a guy that's gone out, slapped a tattoo on his chest because he's proud to get his shirt off. How did we do that? by changing his habits. In fact, he's now running half marathons, training in the gym. This guy is now doing yoga, and from where you see where he's come from, it's an incredible achievement. But the key here is understanding the secondary pillars, particularly mindset. Now, the last of those pillars that I talked about is lifestyle. Your life is so busy, man. So if I was to try to put you on some rigorous plan, which was crazy and tight and involved you needing to train 15 times a week and you couldn't do this and you couldn't do that, and you had to cook these certain meals, it does not work. Because when you try to be perfect, you end up not progressing. You set yourself up for failure. How is this going to work if you're a father trying to get your wife and kids to eat dinner every night of chicken and broccoli. It just does not work. And what happens is we accumulate this stress. Now, back in our ancient days as a caveman, what happened is when we ran away from a tiger, our adrenaline and our cortisol, these stress hormones surged, and we got out of the way of the tiger, and we survived. And then we went and chilled out and rested and recuperated. Those stress hormones come down, and everything was fine. These days, whether you're a boss with all of the responsibilities that brings in, or an employee that's subject to constant stress, the stress of commuting, the stress of performance, you're a dad, you're a husband, you've got to wear so many different hats and you try to juggle all of these. Unlike our caveman days when the stress was frequent but short, these days, the stress is constant. And it's not that we are running out of the way of a tiger, it's that we are trying to balance a million different things. Your healthy lifestyle program should not be something that you should be stressing about. It shouldn't be contributing to the stress that's already there. In fact, it should be trying to reduce your stress levels. When we're stressed, what are the reactions that occur? We eat more emotionally. We eat more because we're craving high sugar and high fat foods that help us to cope with the energetic demands of being in stress. We drink more. Why do we drink more? To numb the pain, to try to dull down, turn the volume down of the stress. And when we're stressed, we get tired, we get defeated, and then we give up and we end up gaining weight. Do you feel me, brother? The old way is not working. So we've got to move from being someone who's trying to transform doing healthy things 
to being a man that lives a healthy lifestyle and gradually incorporates that lifestyle until it becomes him, his new habits, his new program. Like one of my clients here, Kane, who incorporates his family in his workouts and in his lifestyle, going out, doing bike rides with the kids, involving so it doesn't feel like it's just a fat man doing healthy man things and there's that conflict between who we are and what we're doing. In fact, check out on the left-hand side, Kane's transformation. We're talking 10 kilos of fat loss here that's happened predominantly from just being more active and more attentive to what he's putting in his mouth. Or Clint here, another client of mine, where you can see a substantial over 15 kilo reduction of belly fat that's come from adopting a healthy lifestyle rather than trying to be perfect. Are a few pennies dropping here, guys? Or I want to remind you of James, the gentleman that I started with who's lost 68 kilos, sorry, 64 kilos, and is now going from sitting on a couch to running 14 kilometers, almost half marathons, because he's incorporated this belief into his lifestyle. Do you see the difference? Modulating nutrition and activity helps to get you started. But what makes it permanent is changing your mindset and changing your lifestyle. This really is what I can teach you, this model. And if you apply this model in a transformation yourself or with me, you will get permanent results. I guess you're probably feeling a little bit like this, right? <laughs> Lots of information. But let's just really just keep it simple. Let me ask you a question. Would your chance of success increase if you had me by your side, holding you accountable? Like one of my new clients here, Adam, who's decided to incorporate his family in the workouts. Check out Inside the Red Circle. Just finished another workout. This time, the whole family got involved, and I'm stoked. It makes me feel happy and proud to see us working out together. Yet so many guys just try to do this without a plan. It's like trying to build a house without having an architect or a builder design the house first. I'll just put some bricks here. I'll put a framework here. Of course, that doesn't work. You need to get a plan. And whether you get that plan from myself or another coach, get a plan first. I typically work with two types of men. There's two types of men, one being guys who need help with the implementation. These guys are typically guys that have been active before but just don't know how to get started. They really need a push to get the ship moving. The other group of guys are what I call acceleration clients. These are guys that have been healthy and fit before but have kind of hit a plateau and need a bit of a boost. I'm gonna show you two examples here right now. Some implementation clients like Braden and Steve. Check out the difference in the belly fat. These guys were stuck. They were stuck and they needed to help getting started, knowing what to do, getting with the execution and being held accountable. In the converse, here's two other clients, Shane and Remy who already had a good foundation, but wanted an extra push. They were not so much about changing fat, but putting on muscle, a bit of recomposition. Two fantastic clients who were given a plan, helped with the execution, and held accountable. That gives you an insight into what I call the three by four method. The four is the four pillars of transformation, nutrition, activity, mindset and lifestyle. When combined with the three pillars of coaching that I offer my clients, you have a winning plan, man. Firstly, we've got knowledge. There's no point in going out and tackling a program of transformation unless you're doing it the right way. Likewise, there's no point in having all the knowledge in the world 
if you're not going to execute. So the combination of knowledge and execution is what gets you moving. This is what I'm working with day in, day out with clients. But the key to this model is accountability. The vast majority of my clients stay well beyond the initial coaching period simply for the accountability they get out of being inside our private Facebook groups, our members only Facebook groups, and the day-to-day -day accountability that I have with my clients on pushing them towards their ideal life. Does this make sense? All I'm really doing, guys, to be flat out honest with you, is I'm not creating, recreating the wheel. I'm just teaching people exactly what I personally do and have done for the last 15 years. This stuff works, as you can see in an image here, getting you closer towards your own goals. Really, this is my process if you want to get involved. And this is the closest you're going to get to a sales pitch. There's nothing to buy. There's only a chance for you to take action if you feel like it's the right time. The process works by starting with an introduction call. This is a very informal 15-minute call where you and I will have a chat together. And you book that call by clicking the button below. We're going to have a chat. We're going to hear if we like each other. We're going to hear what your challenge is. And then I'm going to ask you a question. Do you want to put in an application to potentially work with me? Once that application has been received, I'll have a look at it and I'll evaluate whether I feel that you are really ready to get stuck in. If you are, we're going to get on a clarity call that takes around 45 minutes and we're going to talk turkey. We're going to seriously get down to the nuts and bolts of why you want it, what you're wanting it, and how we're going to go about doing this. Only now are you ready to get started in your own transformation. So that's the model. There's no hard sell. If you want assistance, click the button below and make your own booking. So that really wraps up what I wanted to cover here, guys. The key highlights to know is that you can change. You can change by yourself or you can change with the help of a coach. But what you need to do is apply the four pillars of transformation. It's only ever going to be temporary if you're just working in calories, if you're just working in nutrition and activity. You'll certainly get some results in the short term, but long-term results is what this is all about. The long-term results come in, my man, when you bring in a change to your mindset and you make sure that you recalibrate your lifestyle to be sustainable with the transformation that you are trying to put in place. Together, those pull perfectly into a model that works repeatedly over and over again without the BS that you see in all of this garbage on the internet and you know programs that people are spruiking. Fat loss science is very simple, but the challenge of losing fat is a little bit more difficult. And if you want help in your own journey, click the button below and let's get started. Otherwise, I want to thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. And if you're stuck, simply get into our Facebook group by Facebook searching Men Mastering Weight Loss and Health. I'll see you across there, man.